Well, joining me now for more on how climate change could be leading to a new refugee crisis is Michael Dorsey. He's the co-founder and vice president of strategy at U.S. Climate Plan. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. So as we mentioned, when people think of refugees and migrants, they're thinking of people fleeing persecution, fleeing war. But how should these economic refugees whose livelihoods are essentially being wiped out by these climate events, how, how should their issues be addressed? Well, really, there's a sort of a three-pronged approach, I think, that's happening right now. The first one is the one you opened with in discussing is that the United Nations is grappling with this new category of, of a new kind of refugee, a climate-based refugee or refugees that are basically you know, forced to move because of changes in the environment. So first of all is setting up the legal infrastructure, as it were, at the multilateral level in the United Nations to define what is indeed a climate refugee? That's been going on, that's going on, that's got to continue. The second thing is allocating resources to help these people. And then the third thing is, is one that really all countries have to engage in, and that's why we have the UN system, to think about who gets the right to be called a climate refugee, what resources do they get allocated, not just in terms of outright monies and so forth, but what kind of supports do they be extended? So there's really those three approaches that are going on right now at the multilateral level. Now, funding always seems to be a very hot-button issue. So. For these wealthier countries who really greatly contributed to climate change with their rapid development, how should they approach then the people who are suffering in these poorer countries who are now really bearing the brunt of it? How, how should the funding work? Well, in the international community, we have a term we call common or a concept, rather, what we call common but differentiated responsibilities. And that's a fancy way of saying that, that those have got more resources, like wealthy countries like the U.S., like those countries in Europe, they've got a larger burden and a larger sort of responsibility to put resources on the table. That's something that a lot of countries in the UN system uh, agree with. The US isn't always in agreement in that, with that approach. But really, we need an approach where those that have got more resources, that have got more capacity, have to put those greater resources to the table, because it's those who have more who also have a larger responsibility to get out ahead of this problem, to save those people that are facing this, this crisis, those climate refugees that are, taking, that are happening around the world. So give us an idea, what could some of the long-term economic impact of this be? Well, the impacts are, are very huge. They're huge both for the countries where people are leaving uh, as well as the countries where they're going to. So they're huge in two, you know, two ends, as it were, but they're also the process of which people people move. It's not always organized. People's lives are at risk. They're, sometimes they're moving uh, you know, very, very quickly. Uh, so there's a whole set of processes that take place that really shapes how we react to the unfolding crisis of climate refugees. And how effectively are countries dealing with this so far? Right now, I would say it's, it's very uneven. You know, there's a, a real robust conversation happening within the United Nations system, but there haven't been large allocations of resources to deal with climate refugees. Indeed, the UN is really tackling just the very concept of how we define a climate refugee. So we don't have those fixed institutional resources yet, but it's a conversation that's in process, and it's one I think that hopefully your, your show you're going to be paying attention to. Now, in terms of incentivizing these countries, or perhaps investing in the trouble spots now, what can be done? Well, you know, there's a lot of things that can be done. You know, first and foremost, rescue monies are needed, you know, desperately uh, in, in certain areas. There's a lot of evidence, for example, that the crisis in Syria was driven in part by changes in, in, in climate. Uh, so we've got lots of examples around the world. There's the case in, in the Sudan where that situation is exacerbated by climate. You see lots of refugee situations. So those situations, they can use urgent monies and urgent resources immediately. Over the longer horizon, we have to build in processes to accept people. We have to come up with new uh, visa processes to allow people that are suffering from changes in, in weather and, and extreme weather to gain access and to be able to move. So there's a whole host of processes, some short term, some medium and longer term. So how difficult is it for some of these countries then to really try and differentiate those that are affected by climate change versus those who are the, the victims of, of war who are, who are fleeing persecution? It's very difficult. I mean, on the one hand, if we go back early enough in time, we can identify changes in weather and so forth in extreme weather that exacerbates a problem. But if you have a war or a crisis in, in a region that's not related to you know, changes in environment, it's hard to parse out you know, who, who's responsible and how we should ca categorize individuals. So it's a very difficult task. It's one I think that the United Nations is stepping towards. It's not easy at all. And given the trajectory that we're seeing, we're obviously seeing it in increasingly rising temperatures, especially over the last five years or so. What does that tell us then about how the future of migration patterns might go? Well, that informs us and tells us that migration patterns are going to be changing drastically. They are already changing drastically. We're seeing many people migrate from places they haven't migrated before. We're seeing places that are, you know, who receive, you know, migrants 
being stressed economically. There are conversations in Germany, for example, where they've taken on a lot of refugees from the Syrian crisis that's pushed and changed the politics in Germany. That conversation is taking place in the United States where people want to restrict you know, migration to this country for various reasons. So we have to have, I think, an open mind to the changes in migration because it's going to be dynamically changing. But that's also why if we commit resources now, we can get out ahead of this unfolding problem. Certainly a lot of global dialogue needed. Thank you so much, Michael K. Dorsey there, co-founder and vice president of strategy at U.S. Climate Plan.